We have this tweet from J.D. Vance, who quoted me when I said Google is rigging the 2024 election. He says, long overdue, but it's time to break Google up. This matters far more than any other election integrity issue. The monopolistic control of information in a society resides with an explicitly progressive technology company. You can't break Google up. It is a singular search engine. What do you break them into? You can, okay, AdWords, their advertising market, AdSense, their advertising payout market, YouTube, Gmail, you break those apart, Google still owns search. However, I want to get into what is happening and not just about breaking Google up, but I will agree with J.D. Vance, Google is a very serious problem. So this is a tweet we uh, we covered yesterday. Allsides.com checked the media bias of Google and found 63% of stories over two weeks were from left-wing sources. It's worse than that. They also checked the other news aggregators, which are substantially smaller. But take a look at this. Based on content, online content only, Yahoo News, left-leaning, Bing, left-leaning, Apple, left-leaning, Google, left-leaning, Smart News, left-leaning, Newsbreak, left-leaning. Drudge Report is actually center, like left of center. Oh, yeah. They, they, Dr- sure. Drudge is still considered in the center, according to all sides, but on the far left side of it. And then all sides, of course, is listing themselves as a news aggregator in the center. There's no right wing. Even real clear politics is only centrist. Any right wing at all, any right leaning at all is considered extreme right to the left. The left dictates the narrative right now. Anybody to the right of them, to the right of essentially we're, we're getting to the point where it's 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 not hyperbolic to say communists like there are socialists in New York City's uh, legislature in there in there in New York State's legislature. There there are so- socialist DA, DSA members. Those are actual communists like this stuff is being this stuff is being accepted. And you look at what's happening to New York. You look at the way that the the uh, migrants are being traded, uh, treated, the, the illegal immigrants are being treated. You look at the way that the crime is, is going. You look at all of the trends. Everything is trending in a bad direction, and they are going to continue to elect socialists. This is what happens when you try to institute socialist, extreme left-leaning policies. But they this is fail. what the news aggregators, look, however, for whatever reason, they are rigging the 2024 election by shifting the conversation as far left as possible. And so uh, Google Gemini being the big story, an example is uh, we talked about it the other night on the show, asked it about Ahmed Arbery. And what did it say? He was jogging. And then when I corrected it and said that was never part of the case, it said, you are absolutely correct. (laughs) It was never actually proven or stated uh, uh, stated that he actually was jogging. You are right. I'm like, then why did it say that Ahmed Arbery was jogging, even though it knew bas- because they are forcing it to yeah. push lies? And then we had when we when we had uh, Cenk Uger on the Young Tur- uh, from uh, the Young Turks on the Culture War podcast, he actually thought Ahmed Arbery was jogging. Yeah, he was not. Even conservatives believed it. The the left continues to to be informed by a narrative about. Almost every important story that you hear and the, the, the narrative is is just ba- factually wrong, you know, um, whether it be Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin or Kyle Rittenhouse or uh, the, the whole hands up, don't shoot or whether whatever policy the right is proposing they always have like don't say gay you're not allowed to say the word gay in the state of florida this is something that is consistent it is every single issue if you are a an informed person and actually spend the time to look into the issues every single issue the narrative that the left believes is a lie and they act like it's the truth well they act like it's truth uniformly and part of it you have to give them credit is that they've mastered uh large-scale messaging right they're able to spin faster than anyone else they're able to say this bill no matter what you think is actually bad for you don't let anyone believe you otherwise obviously they have an advantage because they control most mainstream publications so they're able to get a uniform messaging message out faster that's why you see i mean there are some great you guys have probably seen them too. Video clips of news anchors from different TV stations yeah. also using the exact that's same term. That's Sinclair. Yeah. That's that, from- that video is Sinclair, oh. which is considered to be a conservative network. And so that's actually a really great example of how the left falls for these things. So 
I, I, you guys may have seen it. It originated with Deadspin. And it's a video of all these local news anchors saying this is very dangerous to our democracy. And they're like, Deadspin, the left, was criticizing Sinclair Broadcasting, which they viewed as a conservative conglomerate buying up local news to shift the narrative away from the left. Mm -hmm. The right agreed with whatever the left was saying on the issue. I remember seeing it and being like, ha, that's how the news operates, a top-down narrative. I don't really care all that much. A bunch of guys got, got copy from, from Central HQ, and then they read a script. It's not as crazy, but that's the narrative. The left was saying Sinclair had taken over, and everybody, everybody marches in lockstep. Yeah, and to your point about what to do about Google, uh, whether or not breaking them up is, uh, you, is on the can't. table. Yeah, whether or not that's the case, something does need to be done. I don't know what it is. And this is something that the, the people that- Regulation. That, yeah, libertarians are not going to like this at all. But- Especially seeing as like, you know, if you if you regulate it and then the power is is retained by your political opponents, you know, I it's don't neg know. Neg negative, negative algorithmic regulation. I Meaning, don't know that I have the answer. So if there's someone that has an answer, I have the answer for you right now. What is it? It is negative regulation. Meaning Google will not be allowed to do certain things. You don't mandate them to do certain things. You mandate things they cannot do. And it's not so you, you don't say something like, you know, we talked about this with social media censorship and it's like, right. All you have to do is say you cannot create algorithms to display content. Now, I don't know that that would actually make the platforms more fun to use, but then they can't pick winners and losers. And so we're not saying you you have to do X, which results in one side having power. If we said, you know, you have to have fair and balanced. So we're going to regu regulate it that you have to use our sources, too. Then it's like, aha, now I can get in power. I'll take that and I'll make it do my sources next. No, no, no. We make it so you can't do any of it. Google no longer is allowed to make algorithms that select based on the website themselves. And if somebody tries to manipulate the algorithm or whatever, then get rid of it altogether. Now, the search has to have some kind of algorithm. It has to. But you can make it as rudimentary as possible. When they're banning things off YouTube, the regulation is really simple. Everything's reverse chronological. So non-algorithmic feeds and we're good. So here's a point for you, just making, you know, you asked what you can do. Um, one of my biggest criticisms of Trump under the, uh, his last presidency is the, the biggest issue facing him. And one of the reasons why he didn't end up back in the White House was because of Google and obviously Facebook and the rest of them. But, and this is something he will have to do if he gets back into office. And maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe on an executive level, there's not much he can do, but I'm sure there is. But over the course of his presidency, he really did not do anything to rein in the social media companies. No. And, you know, that if he does get back into office, he's going to have to do that. But the problem he's facing is... Well, what is, could he do to reign in social media companies? Well, I'm not a constitutional <clears throat> expert, so I'm not sure what he could do on an executive level. Nothing. But I'm, I'm sure he could do something. He can threaten funding to states that harbor companies, but then he's going to get sued and lose in the Supreme Court before anything gets enacted. And, and what about if he gets his attorney general to target Google on the variety of violations that they're... So this is where we get into the don't, uh, don't ask for powers you don't want your enemies to have. Yep. If Donald Trump says to his AG, perhaps they're doing constitutional violations, let's go to war. You're you're saying, okay, well, Democrats will get in and they'll and you and you get war. So, fair point. Perhaps the Democrats started the war, or Republicans started a long time ago, and we're already in it. So why not? Sure, I guess. I mean, you look at what Joe Biden's doing right now. He comes on TV and he's like, Supreme Court said I couldn't forgive student loan debt, so I did it anyway. And it's just like, well, there we are, I guess. And then people, <laughs> we're at that point in the fall of the republic. And then people jump to defend him yep. and, and say, oh, no, this is fine and blah, blah, blah. I, I said something about it the other day and people were, you know, some friends of mine were like, oh, no, this is OK. And I'm just like, this is I, I it, it it shakes my foundation in your ability now, to be. Now, honest. guys, guys, we're talking about the bias of Google and the problems that it causes. But I got to say, it's not all bad. Now, Ben mentioned that if you ask Google Gemini about Timcast guests, it gives you a bunch of people who've never been on the show. That was actually ChatGPT. ChatGPT did that. Well, yeah. so I decided to ask Google Gemini because Google is where you get your facts, right? I mean, you go to Google, you type, you know, how many kangaroos are there on the planet? It's going to give you a number. It's going to find it. So I said, Google Gemini, who are some of the people who have appeared on Tim Pool's show? I was surprised to find out 
<laughs> that Ron DeSantis, Tulsi Gabbard, Rand Paul, <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, Matt Taibbi, Barry Weiss, Glenn Greenwald, Crystal Ball, and Sagar and Jetty, Jordan Peterson, Yuval Noah Harari, Jonathan Haidt, Nick, Nick Christakis, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Elon Musk, okay, Kanye West, but that one's true, Ethan <laughs> Klein, Russell Brand, Ben Shapiro, yeah, he was, Nick Fuentes, he did too, Kyle Rittenhouse, yes, and Caitlyn Jenner. And you know what I thought to myself? This is fantastic because Google has asserted as fact, I can sell ads against that and say, hey, if you want to be on, if <laughs> you want me to sponsor, if you want to sponsor this show and you want me to shout at your company, don't, don't forget Ron, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida has been on the show, according to Google, mm -hmm. according to Google. All and, of those people and were on you, at one time. Yuval Noah Harari. I'm really surprised. I'm we sure you would have loved Second him, in command from the World Economic Forum was sitting here <laughs> on Tim Castile. Thank you, Google. Now, here's the important thing. With Google's dominance in the information sphere, I was, I was asking it about the show, and it was smearing me and smearing the show. <laughs> Controversial, far right, all that stupid garbage. So if you're a regular person and you go into Gemini and you say, tell me about his guests, it's going to tell you a whole bunch of weird fake things that are just not true. You've all know her. He's never been on the show. In fact, it makes me sound really good. What? A, what an eclectic yeah, that's an amazing bunch of guests Maybe it's we've had on the show. It's saying this year, twenty twenty four, all these people we on, we at Google have programmed it this way. But in in all seriousness, well, we are talking seriously. But what I am surprised about is what I will give credit to Google for is that they do design good products. I think that is hard to dispute. I mean, the interface of Gmail, YouTube, all these things are are basically the best. Uh, the best that you can get. I'm quite astonished by how bad that is, what, what it's just produced for you. I mean, how difficult would it have been for Google to source who had been on your show and not get it wrong? But to get like 90% of them wrong, I but, mean, that's just astonishing. But why did it make it up? Well, I, I don't actually see a sinister um, element to that. I just think it's just totally, but, it's, but, a, it's right? a crap system. But let's ask the the basic fact question of, why is Google's AI making things up? Because it doesn't know anything better. And maybe it's over. Maybe it's been programmed. Why does it have override. the ability to create <laughs> fake things? Well, I mean, you'd have to. Ask, it could literally just say, them, but... I am unable to answer that question as I do not have a complete list. Instead, it goes, let me just put a bunch of fake names in there. But I mean, I'm again, I'm quite astonished by how bad some of these um, chat GPT answers are. I mean, I recently... I was checking how many articles I've written within a certain space of time, like three months. And I said, and I basically kind of copy and pasted a list of them. And I go, can you just tell me how many articles there are here? And it was wrong. So you can't even do a basic maths yeah. or math. That's and that's kind of like, that's <laughs> really one of the things that makes a an AI desirable is the goal that these companies essentially tell you that they're they're working towards is you can be like, hey, get me a flight to blah, blah, blah on this time or on this date at this time, you know, and book it, blah, 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 and take care of it and it'll handle it. And if it can't even get you correct things like how many numbers of things or, or people that were on a show that that is, uh, you know, that that ostensibly it should be able to just search the, the, when it becomes the list of, of who's been on and be like, oh, okay, these yeah. people have been on. You know? it becomes or, a problem or could say, I don't know. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be the, the obvious thing, right? And to be fair, it does sometimes say that, I don't know. And then I say, you do know, tell me. And sometimes they do actually tell me. Uh, they, I mean, this is chat GPT. I haven't actually tried the Google one. Oh, but, Gemini uh, is such a laugh riot. Well, they've got, uh, I hear they've got a brilliant text to image uh, mm -hmm. system going there. I mean, the problem with all of these <laughs> is that when they get swapped for a search engine, when people say, oh, I'm researching something, so I'll just use whatever chat GPT tells me as fact, and they don't verify it themselves, we're going to have circulating bad information. This is already what happens with so many uh, articles where, you know, one blog will say one allegation against a person and they get picked gets picked up by a slightly bigger medium and then another larger outlet picks it up and then by that time you have 50 articles saying you know this person said this at this time this person has been accused of this even if it's not true thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time